you're looking to dive into topics on how to live a happier, healthier, more fit, and long lifespan, then you've come to the right podcast. Living the dream with me, Coach Damian Evans. Together, we will explore the topics on all things health, fitness, and wellness. Together, we will be lifelong learners on this journey to living the ultimate dream. What up, Dream Team? Coach D here coming at you from beautiful, sunny San Diego, and welcome back to the Living the Dream podcast, where we kickstart your week off with the right mindset to conquer your goals and to live your dream life. And today I wanted to share something that I've been working on for years now. Years ago, maybe even more than a decade at this point, I started a notes folder in my phone called Living My Best Life. And then I made a document in that folder called Rules for Life. And as I encountered situations in my day-to-day in my life, I wrote down what I learned and I wrote down a life rule based on what I learned. I started this list not really knowing what it would grow into, just making little notes. And then as the years went on, I fine-tuned the rules and I changed the specific wording to really make it match exactly how I wanted to live my life. I continued to simplify the rules and These would be rules I would frequently refer to when I had to make big decisions or when I needed guidance on what to do. I wanted this to be a list of rules that if I were to teach my kids on how to achieve their full potential, this list is where I would start. And I haven't really shared this list with anyone before, but from time to time, I'll reference them on the podcast without going too far into depth. And every now and then when I'm giving advice to my clients or when I'm listening to friends, I'll pull out one of these rules in order to give advice that aligns with how I think a good life should be lived. Over the next two weeks, I'm going to be sharing my list here on Mindset Monday in hopes that by hearing them, it may give you some inspiration as to what your list might be if you had to make your own live in your best life folder and what rules for life you would put in that folder what you would write down for yourself and living your own personal dream life would look like. Okay, so here we go. My top 10 rules for life, starting with my number one rule. Rule number one, do what works for you. Ignoring your unique needs, your unique preferences, and your unique values can lead to feelings of dissatisfaction, disconnection, and burnout. As you try to conform to others' expectations or the societal norms. And we all know that those norms are constantly changing. So do what works for you. Embracing authenticity, self-awareness, and autonomy. These things empower you to make choices that are aligned with your personal goals, your values, and your aspirations. Fostering fulfillment, confidence, and inner peace. Imagine someone who pursues a career path or a lifestyle that doesn't resonate with their true passions or interests. Feeling unfulfilled and disillusioned despite external success or approval. Conversely, individuals who honor their own authentic selves pursue paths that bring them joy, that bring them purpose and fulfillment, leading to a life that is rich in meaning and satisfaction. When it comes to your health, prioritize activities and habits that support your physical and mental well-being. Whether it's yoga for stress relief, hiking for your cardiovascular health, or meditation for mindfulness, prioritize things that you enjoy to do for your health. Same thing with fitness. Choose workouts that align with your preferences and your goals. Whether it's weightlifting for strength, cycling for endurance, or just dancing for pure enjoyment. Fitness works only when it's consistently done and it's consistently done when you do what works for you, when you find something that you enjoy. When it comes to nutrition, this is really why this rule came into place in the first place. Nutrition, opt for a balanced eating plan that suits your individual needs and your individual preferences, whether it's following a plant-based diet or practicing intuitive eating or specifically tracking your macros and being dialed in and meal prepping, your nutrition, it's only going to work if you make it work for you. 
we hear all these scientific studies. We hear all these, these, these experts talking about what is the perfect diet or why this food is good and this food is bad. But no other person is like you. No other person will ever be like you. Your genetics, your lifestyle choices, the accumulation of all your thoughts, behaviors, actions, choices throughout the entire lifespan, all those things are variables that affect how food is digested and absorbed in your system. So whereas salmon may be a great food for brain health and protein and, and lean meats, this may not be something that works for you at all. You have to do what works for you. And nutrition is so, so individualized. And this was really the number one reason why I came up with this rule, but it really applies to all other things like your social relationships. Fostering connections with individuals who share your values and interests are so important, whether it's joining a running club, volunteering for a cause that you're really passionate about, or attending social events that energize you. You got to do what works for you. For your longevity, prioritize self-care practices that promote longevity and vitality, whether it's getting enough sleep, managing stress effectively, or engaging in activities that bring you joy and fulfillment. Even things like in your business or for your success, identifying strategies and approaches that align with your strengths and your values, that is gonna be where the money's at. Whether it's pursuing entrepreneurship, maybe it's investing in professional development, or leveraging your unique skills and talents to achieve and find success for you. You have to find what suits you best through trial and error and tracking and chase what works best for you. Recognize that everyone is different in this world. What works for one person, how one person has lost a ton of weight or how one person has made a ton of money. What works for one person may not work for another and probably won't work for another. Learn from your own experiences and preferences to tailor an approach that works best for you. And this requires first having an awareness, second tracking, gathering that data and making decisions based on that data to try to get you to your end destination. You have to reflect on what truly benefits you and stick with it. There's a great quote that I read when it comes to this rule for life by Ralph Waldo Emerson. And it is to be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else is the greatest accomplishment. To be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else is the greatest accomplishment. Rule number one, do what works best for you. Okay, rule number two, moving on. Rule number two is if you don't use it, you will lose it. If you don't use it, you will lose it. Neglecting to maintain or develop your skills, your talents, or even your relationships over time can lead to stagnation, missed opportunities, and a diminished sense of competence and connection. Now, constantly honing your abilities, nurturing meaningful connections, and seeking new experiences, these things foster growth, resilience, and a sense of vitality and purpose in life. Picture someone who once excelled in a particular hobby or a skill, but then gradually stopped practicing or engaging in it, losing proficiency and passion over time. Conversely, a person, an individual who prioritizes continuous learning, who prioritizes practice and continual growth, that person remains adaptable, engaged, and fulfilled throughout their lives. When it comes to your health, Regularly engaging in activities that maintain and improve your physical and cognitive health, whether it's strength training to preserve muscle mass, brain games to sharpen your cognitive function, or socializing to combat loneliness, being able to foster these things when it comes to your overall health is so important. If you don't strength train, if you don't do mental Uh, things in life that help to keep your cognitive abilities, if you don't continue going out there and getting in social situations, those things, you will lose the ability to do that. And we probably know someone in our lives that has 
degraded when it comes to their physical strength, their cognitive abilities, their social interactions. And they probably got that way because they stopped doing it. Fitness, consistently challenging your body with varied workouts to build strength, endurance, and flexibility. Whether it's incorporating strength training, cardio, mobility, flexibility, these things need to stay into your day-to-day routine. You've seen it. You've seen an 80-year-old who has worked on all of these things in their fitness for many, many years, and they look as spry as a 50-year-old. And then you look at a 50-year-old who has neglected their fitness all their life, and you can tell that it's two completely different people. It is so, so important. Your body is an adaptation machine. Your body will respond to stimulus and stress, and it will rebuild bigger, better, faster, stronger. If you give it the stimulus and the time to recover, you will not lose it. Whatever you reinforce, whatever you continually do, your body and mind will continually progress and grow. And it doesn't have to stop in your 70s, your 80s, your 90s. I see all the time online people who started weight training when they were 70s, in their 70s. And now they're more fit than they have been in their 60s, in their 80s. If you don't use it, you will lose it. For fitness, this was probably why I made this rule right here, but it applies to so many other things. Nutrition, if you adopt a nutrient-dense eating plan that nourishes your body and supports your optimal health, whether it's prioritizing whole foods, incorporating a variety of fruits and vegetables, or just staying hydrated, it is so important that you continue to reinforce the type of nutrition lifestyle that you want to have for the long term. All diets work to a certain point, but no diets work forever. An eating lifestyle is what works forever. You must find a style of eating that you can maintain for life and that fits your health, fitness, and wellness goals. Social relationships. Cultivate meaningful connections with others through regular communication, shared experiences, and acts of kindness. Whether it's reaching out to friends and family, whether it's joining community groups or volunteering in your community, you must use this muscle in order to maintain this skill. The more and more you go into a a hermit type situation and you, you go online and you no longer interact with people in real life, if you don't use that skill, you will definitely lose that skill. It is so important. Experts are now saying that, yeah, fitness is great, nutrition is great, stress management is great, but all of that it's not going to be as impactful as your social connections, your relationships. That's why our four pillars of fitness are built on that foundation of community. Longevity, adopt healthy habits and behaviors that promote lifelong learning. What are we here on the Live in the Dream podcast? Lifelong learners. We wanna adopt habits and behaviors for growth and vitality, whether it's pursuing hobbies and interests, staying mentally engaged, or challenging yourself to try new experiences. In your business or for your success, continuously investing in your personal and professional development is going to be so, so important here to stay relevant, adaptable, and competitive in whatever field you're in, whether it's pursuing advanced training, seeking mentorship, or networking with industry peers, regular practice is the key to improvement. Keep learning and keep challenging yourself to stay sharp mentally, cognitively. For me, I am constantly trying to learn new things. I'm on Duolingo with a huge streak right now trying to learn a language because I know that some of the most important things you can do for your brain are to learn a language, learn a musical instrument, Um, Even like things like learning to dance and finding dance routines are so important for your brain. Learning a sport like a um, paddle sport, it has been shown, Dr. Daniel Amen talks about how ping pong, uh, pickleball, tennis, badminton, these things where you have to have hand-eye coordination, fast twitch muscle movements are so important because if you don't use that stuff, you will for sure lose that stuff. 
Think about any stories of people in your life who have neglected their health. And where has that gotten them? A slow, sad, probably painful decline where they now are dependent on others to take care of them? You have to incorporate daily movement and mental stimulation into your day-to-day, not I'm going to do it in the future. No, you have to make this a goal now. On my spreadsheet that I use, that I track things that I want to do every single day, I've talked about it before. I have this Excel spreadsheet where I track over 60 different things. It started with four or five, and then I slowly, gradually built this Excel spreadsheet to where I'm now tracking uh, skills, coordination, balance, um, hand-eye coordination, jumping, sprinting. I have... um, learning? Am am I working on growth? I have uh, rebounding so that I can keep those fast twitch jump fibers. I have um, uh, juving, things like infrared light, things that I really want to continue to keep in my day-to-day. I track it. I find awareness. I track it. And I make sure that if I find I'm slacking on it, I make sure that the next month or the next week, I get right back on top of it. You have to incorporate this daily choice of whatever you want your life to look like in your 90s to make sure that you are on top of it today. I love the quote from Aristotle here that kind of makes me think about this rule for life. And it was, you are what you repeatedly do. Excellence is not an act then, but a habit. You are what you repeatedly do. Excellence is not an act, but a habit. If you don't use it, you will lose it. Life rule number two. Okay, let's move on. Life rule number three. I love this one. This one I live every single day by. Life rule number three. Do the hard thing. Lean into resistance because everything you want is on the other side of hard. Do the hard thing. Ah, I love this. Avoiding challenges or discomfort out of fear or insecurity. This can lead to missed opportunities for growth, learning, and achievement. This is going to perpetuate a cycle of stagnation and regret, or even worse, decline. Embracing challenges, embracing setbacks and discomforts, embracing these things as opportunities for growth and mastery, this empowers you to expand your potential. This empowers you to cultivate resilience and achieve meaningful success in all areas of life. Imagine someone who shies away from pursuing their dreams or tackling difficult tasks due to self-doubt or fear, fear of failure, settling for mediocrity, and regretting unfulfilled potential. On the other side, think about an individual who confronts obstacles with courage, perseverance, and a growth mindset. This person overcomes adversity and emerges stronger, wiser, and more capable than ever before. When it comes to health, embracing challenging workouts, embracing lifestyle changes that may not have been expected, that push you out of your comfort zone, and promote physical and mental resilience. Whether it's committing to a regular exercise routine that's challenging uh, with enough recovery, of course. Maybe it's overcoming unhealthy habits or seeking support when facing health challenges. Even asking for support could be something that is the hard thing to do. In fitness, setting ambitious fitness goals that require dedication, perseverance, and discipline to achieve, whether it's training for a marathon, mastering a new skill, or overcoming plateaus, do the hard thing. Lean into that resistance. Everything you want is on the other side of hard. If it was easy, everyone would have it, but it's not easy. And that's why average and normal, that's why we see it everywhere. But does anyone really want to be our current average, our current normal? I want nothing to do with those words in any category of my life. Nutrition, challenge yourself to make healthier food choices. How easy is it to get the hyper palatable, easy, convenient, ultra processed foods delivered to your door. How easy is it to get that food? How easy, how hard is it to break free from unhealthy eating patterns? It's tough. It is tough. I try to help people with it every single day, 
whether it's cooking nutritious meals at home or for me, what I struggle with practicing mindful eating and not just shoving stuff in my mouth or even seeking guidance from a nutrition professional. You have to do the hard thing because the hard thing on the other side of it, everything you want, social relationships, addressing conflicts, communicating openly, not stuffing it down and holding it in and prioritizing authentic connections with others. This is really hard stuff. Even when it's uncomfortable, even when it requires vulnerability, whether it's having a difficult conversation or setting boundaries with someone or apologizing when you're wrong, when it's necessary to apologize, you have to do the hard thing. For your longevity, adopting proactive health behaviors and lifestyle habits that support the life that you eventually want to get to in your 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Even when it requires effort and sacrifice in the short term, which it most likely will, it's either hard now and easy later, or it's easy now and much, much harder later. Whether it's prioritizing preventative health care, investing in self-care practices, which most people do not invest the time in their day to do. Oh, I don't have time for self-care. I, I have all this other stuff I need to do. Okay, well, when that burns out and we hit this wall after driving ourselves into the ground, yeah, you might have made progress for the first two years and then boom, now you have to take five, six years just to get back to baseline because you drove yourself into the ground. Or making lifestyle changes to reduce disease risk. We see all these chronic diseases popping up. Obesity, type 2 diabetes, uh, Alzheimer's, and cognitive decline. These things can be prevented, but it takes decades before it actually manifests as that chronic disease to get ahead of it and prevent it. That's the hard thing. Do the hard thing. In your business and for your success, pursuing ambitious goals and ventures that challenge you to step outside of your comfort zone and embrace uncertainty and risk. Whether it's launching a new business, starting a podcast, uh, starting a YouTube video uh, service, taking on leadership roles, pursuing opportunities for growth and innovation, growth comes from facing challenges. There's a reason why they say nine out of every 10 business ventures fail. You must fail in order to succeed. You must lean in to the failures. Do the hard thing. Embracing discomfort is the path to growth. Examples of individuals in your life who have thrived by pushing through adversity can be seen everywhere. You've seen and heard the stories of people hitting their rock bottom. And that rock bottom was a catalyst to propel them to the mountaintop. And this is why in everyday life, when I'm encountered with a decision of, of doing the easy thing that everyone else does, the normal thing, the average thing, or going the extra mile, I always choose the path less taken. There was a quote, a great quote from Alice in Wonderland's father, Charles Kingsley. He said, the only way to achieve the impossible is to believe it is possible. Love that. The only way to achieve the impossible is to believe it is possible. Rule number three, one of my favorites, do the hard thing. Lean into resistance because everything you want is on the other side of hard. All right, we got time for two more here on my list of 10 rules for life. Number four, get comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah. Seeking comfort, seeking familiarity, it will be at the expense of growth and adventure. This can lead to complacency, stagnation, missed opportunities, things like not being able to have self-discovery or personal development. Get comfortable being uncomfortable, embracing discomfort, uncertainty, being vulnerable. Embrace these things as catalysts for growth and transformation. This enables you to expand your comfort zone, build resilience, and unlock your full potential. 
Picture someone who avoids taking risks or stepping outside of their comfort zone, settling for predictable yet unfulfilling existence, devoid of excitement or growth. Conversely, individuals who embrace discomfort as a natural part of growth, this process of pursuing challenges, adventures, and opportunities with courage and enthusiasm This leads to a richer, more fulfilling life. When it comes to your health, embrace discomfort as a catalyst for growth and and change in your health journey, whether it's pushing through tough workouts, whether it's facing fears related to medical procedures or addressing mental health challenges, facing these scary things head on, these uncomfortable things, facing them head on. When it comes to your fitness, challenge yourself with workouts that push your limits from time to time. As long as you are educated and you put a uh, focus on the recovery, this is important because if you do the same thing every single day, day after day, your body will adapt to that stress and it will no longer be a stress. It's when you start to feel uncomfortable where you know you're stimulating the body, the mind, whatever it is, you're stimulating and sending a signal that this needs to be stronger. This needs to be better in some way and your body life will adapt to the stresses that you put on it. Step outside of your normal culinary comfort zone, nutrition, and experiment with new foods and recipes that nourish your body and expand your palate. Whether it's incorporating more vegetables, experts say that It's really important for us to get 30 different plants a week. How many plants a week are you getting? Think about the average person's diet, at least in America, at least in the United States. Like that average diet is called the standard American diet, SAD, the SAD diet for a reason. Try exploring different global cuisines. Look at countries that are doing things really well. Maybe get uncomfortable growing your own herbs or growing some different vegetables that you can put out in a plant out on your balcony. Try to get uncomfortable because when it's easy, when it's comfortable, when you get the DoorDash, Domino's pizza to your door, no work done, there's nothing good that comes from that. When it comes to your social relationships, embrace vulnerability, embrace authenticity, Do this with your interactions with others, even when it feels uncomfortable. It feels much more comfortable to put up a wall, to put a mask on, to put a facade on for everything's just fine. People can feel that and they can see through that. It requires courage to be vulnerable, to be authentic. Whether it's expressing your true feelings, whether it's setting boundaries with someone that's pushing your boundaries, or maybe it's initiating that difficult conversation. Do the hard thing. Get uncomfortable with being a little uncomfortable. Longevity. When it comes to your longevity, embrace aging as a natural part of life. But don't think about what everyone thinks about when it comes to aging. The deterioration of your strength, your power, your mind. Embrace it as a natural part of life and approach the physical and emotional changes that come with it with resilience and grace And know that you're cultivating experience and wisdom. That's how I want to look at longevity. That's how I want to look at aging. Whether it's adapting to new routines based on where you're at and how your life is going. Whether it's uh, seeking support from loved ones or pursuing activities that bring you joy and fulfillment. Get a little uncomfortable. Get out there. Try not to be in that comfort zone all the time. When it comes to your business and success, embracing uncertainty and maybe going a little bit risky out there, think of this as inherent aspects of pursuing your goals and dreams. Do you think Jeff Bezos was comfortable in everything he did to make Amazon what it is today? Do you think Elon Musk is comfortable in anything he does at any moment? (laughs) There's some, there's some lines to that, of course. There's always like a pendulum of how far on this spectrum you want to go. But whether it's making a choice with your career transition that is going to be really, really challenging and really, really uncomfortable, 
but you know it needs to be done, taking on new challenges or pushing past the fear of failure or the wrong decision to pursue opportunities for growth and success, it's going to be so important. Growth happens outside of your comfort zone. You have to embrace stressors, life stressors, to build mental toughness. You look at any person that is tough. They didn't get tough without going through uncomfortable situations. You've heard stories of people expanding their limits and achieving their success. They did this over years and years of getting uncomfortable and slowly adapting to all of those uncomfortable situations. That is how they expanded their limits, how they achieved success. Think about what practical steps you can gradually face to get more discomfort in your life and to grow stronger from those discomforts. A quote from Neil Donald Walsh that I love when it comes to this rule, life begins at the end of your comfort zone. Life begins at the end of your comfort zone. All right, last one here before we wrap it up for today. Number five on my top 10 life rules. Number five, how you do anything is how you do everything. Yeah, cliche, sure. Hugely impactful in my life. It, yes, understatement. How you do anything is how you do everything. I live my life like by this rule. Inconsistency and lack of attention to detail can lead to subpar performance. It can lead to missed opportunities and an erosion of trust and credibility, both in your personal life and your professional endeavors. People call me OCD because every day, every class that I take, I make that class or that session as good as I possibly can. I organize all the towels. I organize all the equipment. I make the room look immaculate every single class. I've coached over 15,000 group fitness classes and every single one I put as much attention and detail into making it the experience that those people in that session deserve. And some people say it's way over the top. Some people say I'm way too OCD about it, but it's because how you do anything is how you do everything. Uh, there was a Netflix show called The Bear. You've probably seen it. It's about this chef who takes this run down, just hole in the wall restaurant into a five star Michelin restaurant. And it's because of the attention to detail. It's the small little things. At our gym, we have towels that we have to fold. We offer towel service. And when I fold the towels, I fold the towels the exact same way. And I fold them in a way that looks presentable. It looks very clean and neat. So when members come in, it's like, boom, that looks professional. Is it necessary? No. But when people come in and they see that, that's set, that sets the standard for the entire rest of the experience that they're going to see. How you do anything is how you do everything. Is it over the top? Yes, it's the extra mile, but it is so important, especially it seems like it's such a small, insignificant detail, but that's the thing. When you start to put attention to detail, you will not have that subpar performance. You will find these opportunities that may not have showed themselves had you been lackadaisical in these tiny little areas that all add up to be something huge. You earn people's trust. You earn credibility. You show that this is something that means a lot to you. Cultivating a mindset of excellence and integrity in every aspect of your life promotes consistency, reliability, and excellence, fostering trust, respect, and success in your relationships, your career, your personal development. In the towel situation too, this is what I like to think of. Like if I were to fold the towels differently every single time, it it's actually slower than have I have a set way of folding these towels. Then I know exactly how I'm going to fold these towels and the process becomes much more fast 
it, it's expedited. It's quick. It's smooth. I don't have to think about it because I've practiced the same way over and over and over. And now what takes one person 15 minutes to fold, it takes me five minutes because I've now streamlined the process. It's, it, there's only one way to do it, and that's the right way. Consider a student who approaches their academic studies with diligence, attention, attention to detail, and commitment to excellence. This same mindset, it carries over into their personal and their professional lives, leading to success and fulfillment in all areas of what they do because they have this mindset of how you do anything is how you do everything. For health, cultivate consistency and discipline in your health habits and your behaviors, your lifestyle behaviors, recognizing that it's the small daily actions that compound over time to shape your overall well-being. Whether it's prioritizing regular exercise or constantly making nutritious food choices, the right food choices, 80% of the time at least, 20% of the time you can eat for different reasons, but you're dialed in 80% of the time. Or practicing stress management techniques, making sure that you balance out. When you stress, you need to make sure that you have the recovery from that stress. If you do not have the proper and adequate recovery from that stress, you will not find balance. The harmony in your life will be not there. And eventually there will be burnout, there will be fatigue, there will be a wall that you hit. In your fitness, approaching your workouts with intention, with focus, with dedication, Recognizing that your mindset and approach to training influences your results, the progress that you will see, whether it's maintaining proper form when you're doing the exercises, how you do anything is how you do everything, whether it's pushing slightly through that uncomfortable feeling through fatigue to get out of that comfort zone and into where the change happens, or whether it's staying committed to your fitness goals and identifying as the person who is what you want to become. When it comes to your nutrition, adopting mindful eating habits and paying attention to the quality and the quantity of the substance that you put in your mouth that will eventually be broken down and reassimilated into becoming you. What you eat becomes you. Being mindful of the quality and quantity of the food that you consume. Recognizing that your eating habits reflect your overall approach to health and well-being, whether it's practicing portion control or being mindful and savoring each bite or being mindful of emotional eating triggers when eating when stressed or bored. When it comes to your social relationships, how you do anything is how you do everything. Invest time and energy into nurturing your relationships and treating others how you want to be treated with respect, kindness, empathy, recognizing that your interactions with others reflect your values and your character, whether it's practicing active listening and not just thinking about how you want to respond, whether it's offering support or showing appreciation for someone that you think is doing something really well instead of finding jealousy or being self-conscious about not being enough because someone else is doing something better. When it comes to longevity, prioritizing self-care and adopting healthy lifestyle habits that support your physical, your emotional, your mental well-being, recognizing that your daily choices and behaviors impact the long-term health and vitality of your health span, whether it's getting enough sleep, whether it's managing stress or staying physically active, How you do anything is how you do everything. With your business, with your success, approach your work with professionalism, integrity. Approach your work with excellence, recognizing that your commitment to excellence and attention to detail set the foundation for success in all areas of your life. Whether it's delivering quality work, meeting deadlines and not being late, or striving for continuous improvement, Small habits reflect larger patterns. I don't care if you are the bus boy, the lowest on the totem pole. I don't care if you have a paper route. Whatever it is, do what you do with excellence. Because how you do anything is how you do everything. 
Consistency in this area will breed success in every single area of your life. You know that person in your life. You've seen the anecdotes of, of, of people highlighting the correlation between habits and outcomes and being excellent in what they do. Think about strategies that you can implement into your life. How can you be a little bit better? How can you have attention to detail? How can you go above and beyond and go the extra mile and cultivate these positive habits across various domains of your lifestyle? A quote from Robert Collier, success is the sum of small efforts repeated day in and day out. Success is the sum of small efforts repeated day in and day out. Number five, how you do anything is how you do everything. Super powerful. All right, team, this episode is getting a little long, so I'm going to pause right here. Stay tuned for next week, Mindset Monday, for the second half of my top 10 rules for life. I guess this is what they call a cliffhanger in the old media world, but let me know your thoughts if you listen to this. Please share with me if you have any similar rules for life and how you incorporate them into your own dream life. I'm going to talk with you next week. We're going to continue on towards being the best that we can be with the second half of these 10 rules for life. And that's it, my friends, for this week's Mindset Monday episode of the Living the Dream podcast. Please share the knowledge that you gain with your friends and family and hold each other accountable. If you enjoy this content, it helps a ton if you could post on your social media stories a screenshot of this episode and include one takeaway that you learned and make sure that you tag me and share your journey. Tag me at Living the Dream underscore podcast or at Coach Damien underscore SD and let us know how this episode benefited you. And if you could take a moment to scroll down and leave a review, that would be super helpful. It's a nice non-cost way to support this podcast. Let us know what we missed. Let us know what we got wrong. Tell us how you have lived rules for life that have helped you live a better life. We really want to know. Message us if you have any suggestions or tips that would help your Living the Dream team that we can discuss on future episodes. I will be right here with you working on making us stronger, happier, and healthier humans. Until next time, friends, keep living the dream.